I'm John Murray. I'm founder and CEO of Seabright, and uh, we have developed a see-through and non-see-through head-mounted display. Let's start by talking a little about the augmented reality and virtual reality market out there and how you've seen things evolve. So it's entirely exploded this year. Between many players entering the market and just the growing affordability of small displays and the proliferation of the different form factors ranging from smart glasses to more immersive displays, there's a lot of room for innovation and I'm happy to see it here at GDC. A lot of the focus so far has been on console and PC. Talk a little bit about why you chose to focus on the smartphone market. So the smartphone market is huge. There's tens of millions of devices capable of dis delivering a really compelling experience. Uh, ranging from the iPhone 5 to the 5S to the latest Android phones. They're capable as consoles several years ago. When it comes to this device, walk us through what the experience will be and how you guys are combining both AR and VR. So we envisioned a device that did not occlude your field of view and your expression, one which allows you to see around you as well as see the content of the screen itself. So I'm going to demonstrate this by putting it on, but we envisioned it more like a hat, something which sat up and away from your field of view that left your eyes visible. Uh, we also realized with this set of optics that we addressed a lot of problems and sort of solved them at the same time. Uh, we're using very simple reflectors that can be both half silvered as well as fill silver and these provide a, a fairly compelling field of view and magnification of an existing smartphone, while still allowing you to engage and see the environment around you. And talk a little about the controller and how that will play into these video game and other virtual experiences. So we designed a controller that was particularly suited for a head-mounted display, something which you have most of the time in front of you and you want the familiarity of hardware buttons, yet something which is visible and trackable by a, a camera on the smartphone. So we have both select buttons as well as a trigger and a joystick while having a full nine axis motion controller in here to allow you precision in controlling either virtual reality or augmented reality. Let's talk, talk a little bit about some of the demos you guys have here at GDC and how they're utilizing this technology. So we have a couple of demos here. One of them is in-house. It is closer to a darkroom ride where you experience head tracking and are able to have a play take place around you. We also have another experience which is aimed more at casual gamers, one where you contemplate a puzzle and get to see the results while tracking around with a camera in interesting ways that aren't just moving the virtual camera where you look in real world. How do you envision things moving forward and how do you see people utilizing this technology into new video game experiences? So we see people increasingly experimenting. Uh, consoles and high-priced AR head-mounted displays don't well suit themselves to experimental niche verticals. And we see their prol proliferation of uses as these devices become more common, as people are more familiar with their capabilities and what they can deliver. What impact uh, will the newer devices we're starting to see that have been announced at CES and will start trickling into the market, things like Tegra K1 technology from NVIDIA and the latest from Intel and other makers in terms of the chipsets that will be on these smartphones? It's just getting better and better. Uh, the rate of increase of the GPUs and the processing power in phones far outstrips the screen size themselves, which led, which led us to use this increasingly popular and already present platform as the basis for our system.